Welcome back to Dyson Days. I am Madison. Theo's down there somewhere. We are posting our day today, striving to raise our children up in the Lord and also a little bit of first time homesteading. Today's video is going to be an update about the kittens that are now one week old. It is also going to be a little how to repot a plant, a house plant, and also how the garden is doing and how I have pruned the garden. And if there's anything else, it's just gonna be a little bonus, kind of like what you just saw, the horses and Duke sprinting behind me. All right, let's go take a look at the kitties. All right, making our way over to the garage. Mark is out front mowing somewhere over there. Mark's car shop. But they're all really comfortable. Every time we come in here, they're sprawled out. Doing good, all seven of them. He's like, okay, I want my baby back. Yeah. Okay, so they're starting to open their eyes. They are, they were born on the 9th, and on this day it is the 17th. Just over a week old. Such a good mama cat. We'll give her and them some peace and quiet. Now on this portion of the video, I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of how to repot a plant. Now this is a house plant that I have that is outgrowing its container that it came in, uh, but it is thriving and growing taller. So I need a wider space. So as you can see here, I have my potting soil. I have a container that it is going to go in that is probably three or four times the size that it's in right now. I also have a glass jar to scoop my potting soil into the new pot. That way it doesn't get too compacted and it also helps uh, the mess not be such a mess because I also don't want to get my new pot all dirty on the outside since this is going inside. So I'm going to fill the new pot just over halfway with the new potting soil. I don't know if I mentioned, but the potting soil is good for indoor and outdoor pots. I also grabbed some scissors. That way I can cut the container that my plant is in currently. So now that it's a little bit over halfway full, I am going to take my plant out of the container that it came in. I just found a little hole at the bottom that I can cut from the bottom to the top. Now you can cut in more than just one place It'll make it a little bit easier to get the plant out. That's okay. This worked for 
me. And then I dug a little well in the new pot to place my plant in. And then we're just going to cover around the plant a little bit more and pack it just slightly so that the plant's not moving around and then the roots can start uh, branching out into its new soil. I learned a trick that I want to share with you guys. Now because this is a hanging plant and it's going to be up very high, it's not going to be easy to water, I learned that you can use ice cubes and it's also a slow release of the water. Great tip, right? I still may have to throw the ice cubes in order to reach the pot. You will see here soon when we go to hang it up. Before I go inside, I'll go back to the garden and give you a quick update on how the tomatoes and bell peppers are doing. Now I planted just a regular, can't remember, I'll have to look in the garage and put it in the details below what kind of tomato plant this is. And then here we have an organic tomato. And then the bell peppers are popping up. And the next one I actually planted cauliflower, but I'm not sure which are the cauliflower coming up or if none of them are. This is the bed I did nothing with and it's just a jungle. Now the bees have been hanging out here in this weed, so that's good. I want the pollinators to be around if you can see a few of the bees flying around. I hear that's good. I actually don't know why. They may pollinate the tomato plant to help the fruit grow. I don't know, but I know that the pollinators are wanted. Yeah, so I was just pulling the suckers off. If you know, if you have, you know, been a long-term gardener, there is a leaf called a sucker, which is just taking the energy from the plant um, and it can inhibit, no, inhibit, prohibit the production of the fruit. So it's like these little, leaves are the suckers that you can just pinch off to help the plant grow its fruit. So I've been out here doing that today. There's the update on the garden. Here we've got our potatoes sprouting up. If you can see the little green spots. Our zinnias are still growing. I also have a kombucha scoby hotel up here in the cabinet is where i store my kombucha i also put it right next to the sourdough starter because they both have active um, bacteria in it maybe they'll be buddies here we have our scobies and i filled it to here with our black tea and sugar today so once I get the kombucha thing down, if I'm able to successfully make kombucha, then I will share on YouTube how to do that. And I'm gonna take my starter out and set it here as a reminder that I need to feed it today. And yes, this is indeed a mouse trap on our stove. Okay. So the last part of this video, I'm going to show you where I'm hanging the plant that I just repotted. And then I'm going to try to clean up quick before the babies wake up from their nap. And 
while Mark is still outside working. I will say I really like how this pot looks. It was a Walmart find. I like the chain. I think it goes with the old, I mean, you know, just with the decor of my house. It's not too cheap looking and it's also not super modern. So as you can tell, my house is not super modern. Pardon the mess. Go ahead. You want me to stop it from? Oh, that's okay. Now to water it, I'll just have you put ice cubes in it. Okay. Luckily that one only needs to be watered once a month. Theo has awoken from his nap, so that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching Dyson Days. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you haven't yet, subscribe, because then you know the next time we're going to post it, or the next time a video comes out, and it might be another kitten update, or a look at how the plants are growing, etc., etc. All right, well, have a great day. Thanks again for watching. See you next time on Dyson Days.